this child had no business being in the same room as Ty. The father was a terror to his ex-wife and to anyone he saw as a threat. And in short, he was a walking billboard advertising dangerous and erratic behavior. And despite countless court appearances and allegations, Anthony Tesserero was given one final night to spend with his son before relinquishing custody. And then he took out a gun, shot his son, and then shot himself. How could this happen? Ty's mom, Jing, tried to get help. It went nowhere, and now people want answers. Attorneys and experts are calling for more training for judges. They also want a dedicated family law court where judges would deal only with these delicate cases. Denver 7's Jennifer Kovaleski, who broke this story, gives us some background. That where you live. He knows where I live? Yeah. And Papa wants you to tell me that? He said you're only going to be safe in the real Hawaii. In the real Hawaii, huh? Uh -huh. Okay. This is a story about control, online harassment, and a 10-year-old boy caught in the middle. Did they protect your son? No. A fatal encounter the boy's mother says could have been prevented. There was so many agencies were involved, so many. I begged, talked to, can try to convince everybody to, to do something. Let's go back to early Saturday morning, September 21st. Jing Tessarero wakes up to a chilling email in her inbox. The author, her ex-husband, Anthony, telling her, by the time you finish reading this, Ty will be moments away from joining me in the afterlife. It's pretty much like suicide note. And he said he was going to take my son with him. And I called 911. Jing got in the car and drove to her ex's Lone Tree apartment. I just kept waiting for the ambulance. And I was hoping there was going to be an ambulance. But no ambulance would show up. And he said they both were dead in the house. Her ex-husband shot her son, Ty, and then turned the gun on himself. Heartbroken. I don't know. I don't even know the words. What else? I'm feeling angry, upset. Um, regrets and less than 24 hours before we had an awful hearing at the family court I was gonna get custody of my son but somehow Ty still goes home with his dad did you want your son to go with his dad that night no no we even told the judge more than once that we were worried we were concerned for Ty's safety she did anticipate an order being issued over the weekend for Ty to be removed within eight hours Ty was murdered. Caroline Cooley is Jing's attorney. Her firm specializes in complicated family law, but she says this case is different. In 20 years, I have never had a case that where a child has been so systematically, methodically, consistently alienated and no change is occurring and no systems responding to it. To understand what Jing's ex did, they played audio recordings in court. He doesn't, he doesn't want to be with you. Yeah. He hates you. AJ, can you just let me talk to my son? No, no I cannot. Go get a police officer. No. no. She says this happened almost every time Jing tried to pick up Ty for her court-ordered parenting time. Like it matters if she mad. She lied to us, Ty. Come you on. know what piece of crap she is. Yeah, no, she's hug. lying to you. Ty, can you just she's listen lying. to mama for you a minute? You know how she lies. She's going to grab you. Come on. No. Ty was just his tool, and Ty is just being used. Jing's ex also had a mandatory protection order to stay away from her. How many times did he violate that protection order? I can't count. I, my opinion, there was so many, so many. There's, yeah. And what did police, what did the court system, what did DHS do? Nothing. Nobody did anything. An order that also should have kept him from having a gun. But the abuse doesn't stop there. Anthony took his threats online, where he used open sites like cheaterreport.com to destroy Jing and her new husband's reputation. The online post never stopped, never stopped. It was ongoing till last weekend. The same website where he would post his suicide note, his final message of control, a message Jing says he never should have been able to write. He lost and he had to take time with him. He, because that's the only thing he could control on that night was Ty. Poor Ty. What do you want done? I want there to be a formal investigation. I would like the governor to get involved. This is not right. This is something needs to be done. You know, the kids shouldn't be. Kid knows. They know. They know.
And she's right. This is not right. Jennifer's here in the studio. You first brought this story to light. This is so disturbing that this can even go on in this day and age. But first, how is Jing doing? You know, I think Jing is doing as well as can be expected. Yeah. I mean, it, it's interesting. She's glad we're doing all this reporting, but she did tell me that she still can't even watch some of the videos because it's just still too hard. We saw Jing at the funeral, the memorial for Ty that was last Saturday. Mm -hmm. And I think the biggest thing for her is obviously she's heartbroken, but she wants to make sure that this never happens to another child. She wants accountability. I think she's transi transitioning from some of her grief yeah. to wanting to be more active to say, hey, this was not okay what can be done to make sure that what happened to my son doesn't happen to anyone else. So we know a review is happening. What what comes of that? You know, that, that's kind of a big question. We really, we've wanted to sit down with DHS. We've wanted to talk to them about this. They say they can't talk about child welfare matters, which is, is true in most cases. Sure. But there is a state investigation. They have to do that by statute. That's what has to happen. So that process is going forward. But as you heard Caroline Cooley say, the attorney for Jing, they want an independent investigation. The only person who can call for that is the governor. The governor has stopped short of calling for that investigation, but says that they are watching this closely. They want the investigation to be as robust as possible. But we continue to ask those questions to say, because a lot of people question, can the state really investigate itself? Yeah. We heard that attorney say, um, well, and, and, and the mom say, no one did anything. Mm -hmm. So we know that there were warning signs out there. How how do those just fall on deaf ears? I, I, I completely, we've been trying with our reporting to figure that out because it's not just one agency, right? We're talking right. about DHS. We're talking about police. Lone Tree Police were called multiple times. We're talking about the court system. How does the judge allow him to go home with the dad for one last night after finding he had zero credibility? And I think that there are a lot of questions. There are some issues with the mandatory protection order and the law, which said he shouldn't have had a gun. Bottom line, he shouldn't have had one, but there's a loophole in the law that DA George Brockler talked to us about that he would like to see fixed, that lawmakers would have to come and bring a bill forth um, this upcoming session. So we could see that. There are questions about DHS. There was an investigation, so DHS did an original investigation. But when things started getting worse before this most recent court hearing, which took 15 months, by the way, for them to get that. Wow. Um, they refused to reinvestigate. And why they didn't take these more seriously is, is a question that still needs to be answered. Well, it's shocking, sickening, I mean, all of those things. Mm -hmm. What else, I, I know lawmakers are talking about this issue uh, on so many different levels. So what else besides uh, what you said? Uh, yeah, so, you thinking? know, the investigation is, is one part. If that comes back with more information that maybe should be looked at. I also think that lawmakers, there's been a push and people in the family law community have asked for, as you mentioned at the, at the beginning of the program, the dedicated family court system. Right. And here's what's kind of interesting about this. I didn't know this. So most district court judges in Colorado, they go through transitions in between different types of courts. So they'll go from criminal to civil to family law. Hmm. So they're not experts in one area. So they know a little about a I lot, see. but they don't know, you know, they're not experts in one area. So there's been a push to say, hey, maybe we should have a dedicated family court system where the judges just work on those cases. Well, we know you're also dedicated to uh, getting we answers are. to this story, and I know you'll stay on top of it. So Jennifer Kowaleski, thank you for, yes, for thank all your you. work on this and, and uh, our condolences to Jane. What a, what a terrible, it's a heartbreaking story. terrible story, yes. We'll be right back.